Are we all cured? We got the fucking. We, we, we've got to do the fucking shit that we need for fucking uh, dog abuse. No, 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 Sean here, and how the hell did I not know about this woman named Nikki? There are a lot of things that I only catch when I watch the streams of others. I was watching Wine Lover, she had Shin's Koala on there, and it's one of my favorite streams, I guess you would call it. It's on-demand content now. They were talking about this woman named Nikki, and it played out just like I thought it would when I made my stalker video. This happened to a real woman. It culminated apparently by him showing up at her work, his boyfriend having to put cuck boy in his place. They called probation apparently on Mr. Penis, and I heard that it was more than one person. And they did not just send his one probation officer, the female probation officer. Apparently a male came with her. That is the level of concern they have for him. And I know it's not the first time they were notified that he was a psycho. Lorne is the guy you see on these serial killer forensic files. Unfortunately for the victim, she just happened to come or cross paths with the killer, Lorne Armstrong. These women who cross paths with him, the women who are just going about their daily business, along comes this guy, and he wants to talk to you, and you're trying to be polite, and he finds out where you work. And he shows up at your work and he tells you, well, I came here because we had that connection when we were sitting next to each other on the bus. We were talking about the weather. Well, I thought you might want to continue that conversation. I'm not interested in you. No, we had that connection. I'll come back next time when you're free. Not, not understanding without someone being forceful that he's way out of line. Now, the probation showing up at his house is a big deal especially since it was two people. The probation officer assigned to a case usually shows up and handles it themselves. Lorne is damn lucky there was not a deputy with that probation officer. You've got a guy who's a sex offender. He's on the registry, and he's getting complaints called in on him for stalking. A deputy could have showed up, and they could have handled it much differently than they did. I think Maria, or whoever it was, was probably snowballed into thinking he was a desperate and pathetic, sad little man. Even if she'd heard the phone calls, Lorne could probably manipulate her with his tears into thinking, it was all the catfish women in my past and everything else, because Lorne is full of shit. I think we know now what Paula went through. I told you, I think he told Paula, if you keep doing this, we're going to break up. And they were never even together. As, I, as I've stated before, and as some of you have stated, it takes two to break up, and Lauren has to be included on the breakup. But to start a relationship, only Lauren has to be involved. So Lauren is the key to both the start of a relationship and the end. Paula probably didn't even know Lauren was interested in her. But like the little clingy, psychotic, neurotic, lunatic he is, he assumed because she was friendly to him that it was, it was go time. They were headed towards a relationship. And I think with Nikki it was the same thing. I honestly do. And I think Paula received similar treatment, phone calls, whatever else. I don't know how he could communicate back then, maybe emails or chat. What you have done grosses me out. Just random stuff, and she blocked him. Lauren demonstrated this behavior with Ramona where he got another phone, and then he called Ramona because she blocked that phone or she stopped answering. Once he sets his sights on you, it's like a psychopath who has a victim. Once he hits that mindset of we're together, or we're going to be together, you just don't know it yet, there are some real issues. I think when he showed up at Nikki's workplace, he probably assumed, okay, she'll see, she'll see, we're good together, we're perfect together, and the guy that's putting a wedge between us, that boyfriend, he's got to go, we got to get him out of your damn life, 
Do you remember when I said if he had a job and he met a girl who was working at a gas station, Lauren would leave his job to go to the gas station. He would go up there and just sit and wait around and want to talk to her, even though she was uncomfortable and may have told him she was uncomfortable. Lauren would say, well, let's get to know each other then. That's what he thinks. If a woman said, look, you're making me nervous. You're making me uneasy. Well, let's get to know each other then. That's what I'm here for. You know that I'm here to help you overcome that. He already has the end goal in mind. He assumes that her end goal is his, which is to get over the creepiness that she feels coming off of him. If you just got to know me, you'd love me, Nikki. You're with your boyfriend, but let me show you what you're missing. My misshapen body, my bald head, my he, 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 and my cursing, calling you a cunt hole, and everything else under the sun. You're missing out on that. Okay, sweetheart? It's me. It's Lauren Armstrong. All of her friends were probably asking, who is this guy coming to work? Why is he stalking you? Where did you meet him? Well, we were at the grocery store and I said paper or plastic and the next thing you know, he's at my work. Lauren's a prover. He's the kind of guy that he interviews people when they're talking in a way that's disarming so that they'll tell him personal information so that he'll have it. He's a collector. I don't think he knows he's doing it. I think it's all he knows how to do. So again, do I think he's dangerous? Yes, I do. I think if he had a woman in person and he was dead set on her and he wanted her and they were in a relationship in his head and she said no and he could get her in an isolated area screaming, yelling, trying to pin her against the car because a lot of the serial killers, a lot of these psychopaths are cowards. They don't go after men. They go after women because they see them as weaker. They see them as lesser. Lawrence never had any real power. He's been weak his entire life. But on the phone, he can be a tough guy. I told you at school, he probably started a bunch of crap because he knew the teachers were going to protect him. In prison, I think he kept to himself. I've heard a bunch of bullshit about befriending a gang member and all of that. But I don't think that happened. I don't. I think Lauren Armstrong has never had any power. And the feeling that he has power over women would be intoxicating. And I feel for women like Nikki, she's not the first, like I said. There's no way she's the first. Lauren's been alive too long. We know this has happened. You know it's happened before he got busted in this sting. They need to pay attention to these behaviors and somebody who is a sex offender. Because this is someone who has no regard for anyone else's safety, no regard for the safety of a woman or her boundaries. He has no respect. And I think in the long run, when you've got a Lauren Armstrong, when you've got a guy who is hyper-focused on one woman too long, hyper-focused on a potential relationship with this woman, it's going to be a bad situation for everybody. These catfish women, and I applaud them, because these catfish women, they kept him from stalking and terrorizing real women. Look what he did to them on the phone. They took it. They're heroes. I don't care what you say. I don't care what you try to tell me. What they did was heroic. They took the bullet. They dealt with this psycho, and they kept him off the streets. Those phone calls where he was constantly, every day, hitting them up so many times, screaming, yelling, freaking out when they wouldn't call him back immediately. These poor women that are in the same city that he can drive by over and over again and drive past and they look out the window and there's that truck sitting out there and he's waving and he's got flowers. Oh, a restraining order? That's okay. I know I'm supposed to be 50 feet from you at all times, so let me put this on the ground 50 feet from you. I measured it out. It's okay. I think that's the case. And now that I think about it, there should be some kind of program where all of these women 
that would be willing to volunteer their time would occupy these psychos. Just make sure they never had their number or IP address or any way they could trace them. Just keep them on the line, keep them on the hook, and keep them away from real women. You have to ask yourself some questions when you're dealing with someone like Lauren. Do they have the capacity for violence? Well, we know the answer is yes. Are they quick to anger? And can they reach a level of sustained rage? Yes. Is he compulsive? Yes, he is. Is he impulsive? Yes, he is. Is he possessive? Yes, he is. All of these traits put together. Psychopathy. Well, maybe not 100%. But when it comes to women, Lorne can reach a level. He's not a full psychopath. He's not. But psychopathy is real when you talk about him because he can work himself into that character. There's a new classification that they're kind of toying with about people who are not full-time psychopaths. These are people that slip into the role, almost like they're an actor, and this is something they've been training for. They may not consciously get into the role, but they get into it. Once Lauren picks a target, think about what I'm saying to you, picks a target, a victim. He wouldn't assume they were a victim. They would be a willing target. Once he picks a victim, he's going to be hyper-focused. They're not coming out of his sights, no matter what. And even if, even if she was friendly to him and tried to let him down politely, tried to tell him, look, you're a nice guy, but I don't think it's going to work out. Lauren doesn't understand that you can be, he doesn't get that you can be friends with somebody, that a woman can like somebody without loving them. There's a three-day grace period for Lauren that if you like him, it has to turn into love because if it's not love, you're doing it wrong. I don't know all the details, but I do know if he talked to Nikki if he did talk to her, and it was for more than three days, even if it was 20 minutes a day, remember, Lauren, he, he just doesn't understand the concept of time. So he, he would see it as, we've been talking for a week, paper or plastic, for a week. It starts off, he goes to their place of business. They have a discussion. Then he goes back. He doesn't really need anything, but he goes back and he buys something small. And then he goes back again. And then he goes back again, and he keeps going back to the point where she's starting to notice, this guy's coming in here a lot, and he's coming to my lane even though there are open lanes. I need to find out more about who Nikki is. But from what I understand, he did exactly what I thought he would do. Exactly what people were afraid of, what we knew these catfish women were protecting others from. Again, if you don't think he he should be catfished, you're wrong. They kept him occupied. He wasn't really concerned. Jamie, Amy, the robot, thank God. I mean, I I don't know if if we're supposed to act like we don't know who was behind those calls, but I'm going to pretend because they always refer to it as the robot and not a person. But that's not really what I'm talking about. What I am talking about is answering those questions. And you also have to ask yourself, if you do not think Lauren is dangerous, would you want this type of behavior towards you? It may not bother you because you've never been a target of it. Then ask yourself, would you want your wife or your daughter or your sister, mom, whoever, to be the target of this kind of behavior? There's a case. A young kid who was infatuated with a 40-year-old mother Her children were grown, and he would not take no for an answer. And finally, one day he snaps, shows up at her house, and shoots her. Because she gave him a ride home once. He would constantly ask her at work. I use the word constantly, but apparently that's true in this case. Constantly ask her at work if she would go out on a date with him. A lot of younger guys fantasize about experienced women that they're going to be these sex masters and it's going to be the greatest experience in their life. They don't know about 
the struggles of being a single mom. They don't know about the stress. And they just see women as sex objects. Lorne sees women as sex objects. And I think Nikki dodged a bullet. And I think there were more people that were involved. I think the number of women will never truly know who he stalked. We don't really know what he did when he said he went to meet at the fair to look at each other from across the fair. We don't know if he found out she went and he drove down there to see if she was with another guy. All of this stuff is now coming into focus the more we find out about this psycho. Those are my thoughts. I love you guys. I will see you in the next one.